Hi, Askin RDC here, and in this video we're going to continue the To Make a Sailor, which is going to go over forming an ITE, and then most importantly it's going to go over the swimming part, which seems like a lot of people have questions in the comments about. So uh, I'll go over a little more detail, and there's this video itself actually covers more uh, than you see in like the little quick ads, uh, and then you get to hear a little bit from the recruits that are going through at this time. But yeah, we're going to break it down, and it's starting off with Reveille the next day. Let's go! I wake up every morning and I'm like, I'm really in Navy boot camp. Good morning. Us. Uh, right, so a couple of things that we saw. One, right when they answered, the lights were off because that's because it's between taps and railway, they turn off the lights, the white lights, and they turn on the red lights. The red lights is because in the Navy, you can't uh, see that spectrum of lighting, uh, or it's the, the spectrum of lighting that doesn't go as far as the rest of the spectrum of the light. So we use red lights at nighttime in the fleet whenever it's sunset to sunrise. Uh, and then, so dark and ship, we turn off all the white lights and we turn on red lights. Um, so here we do it at the same thing in the compartments on in uh, boot camp. Uh, initially, you could saw that when the first came in, all the RDCs came in at once. It's because we actually have a POD. As you can see up here, there's a bunch of papers, right? Uh, these are all things that are welcome for you to look at it as a recruit. It's up to recruits and RDCs to update this board. And one of them is a POD or plan of the day, or in the fleet, we like to call it plan of deception. Uh, so it will tell you when bedtime is and when Reveille is. Uh, so it's not really a surprise. It's not like they're just going to bust in and wake you up. Um, they're, you're going to know. Uh, when you're going to be expected to wake up. Uh, but here, here as well, you can see this is the watchstander. Uh, it's probably the roving security watch. Um, but this poster here, it's changed a couple of times, but for the most part, it's the same. And you can actually Google it online if you just look up uh, sound off procedures, RTC boot camp, something like that. And his job here is to follow the 11th general order to be especially watchful at night and during the times for challenging to challenge all persons on or near my post and to allow no one to pass without proper authority. So he's challenging chief right now, and that's what you do. Any staff member that comes in, not another recruit, you're going to challenge the staff members. If you see another recruit, obviously, if it's your own recruit, no big deal. Just let him in. Uh, but if the it's a recruit that's not yours or someone of the opposite gender, do not let them in. Stop them at the door. Stop, tell them to state their business. Halt state your business. But this, he's challenging. So it's really simple. Uh, it's broken down to uh, if he's not an officer, he's a chief. So good morning sir ma'am or title so good morning chief seaman recruit whatever this guy's name is division 229 roman security watch standing by for further instruction chief so it says sir ma'am or title again it's because we're sandwiching uh you start and end it um it says recruit what's two plus two chief two plus two is four chief it's sandwiching right uh so expect that to happen a lot uh anytime a staff member comes in it's going to happen a very lot uh make sure to practice this to sound up properly and then usually what happens is they'll ask you a question that you should know during a personnel inspection you know who's the president of the united states who is the ship's lcpo what is the pay grade of uh, a lieutenant they're going to ask you questions uh, and they're also going to inspect your deck log uh, which is just to the right of this recruit uh, and it's we use these in the fleet as well uh, but here at recruit training command you would just use them to log basic entries such as reveille when the what the divisions do if they're going to chow if they're going to pt uh securing the watch uh whether or not the roman security watch made a tour stuff like that and it's all inspectable and it's made to written in a very cookie cutter way to the point that they know if you made uh, entries incorrect. So expect that a lot. And RDCs expect the recruits to be sounding off every time you enter a space. Um, it's part of training. Let them finish. Uh, unless you're in and out and really hurry, usually you usually hear people say, carry on watch as soon as they say good morning. And you're like, no, carry on. Let them finish it off. Let them practice. And then ask them a question. It's good for the training. You're there to train them. Uh, quit stuttering. It says, good doesn't morning. feel like we're here. And it's like you go to sleep and you wake up and, and then you look around yeah, and you're, you're like, here. oh, crap. You shave that? Yes, very officer. When? Last night, petty officer. Did you shave this morning? No. So this part's pretty funny, right? Uh, so one, keep in mind, RDCs, you're going to be inspected by all the time by recruits. All the time recruits are inspecting you. you they're not, there's no recruit inspection of RDCs. What I'm saying is you're walking around, you're wearing this uniform, you're telling them what to do all the time, you're teaching them the rules of what you can and can't do. So understand, they're going to be looking at you to make sure you do that. So making sure that you're shaved as well and you're wearing your uniform properly and looking sharp, good haircut, just like this petty officer has right here. Uh, so as a recruit, you're going to shave. Uh, if you're a male, you'll shave every day, sometimes twice a day. You'll shave in the morning and then you'll shave before watch. 
if you have peach fuzz, that counts as shaving. So uh, you get inspected all the time as a recruit. You're always under inspection as well. And RDC walks by, they're, they're checking you to make sure you're proper and where you're supposed to be, wearing the right thing and doing the right thing. Uh, and as you can see here, as he's uh, inspecting this recruit's shave, this guy over here on the side is just touching his face. He's like, oh, man, did I shave? So you know, just make sure you're doing the right thing. Petty officer. Or within the last hour. No, petty officer. Go shave. All right, petty officer. Now we're in our permanent ship, and it's a heightened amount of stress. So just real quick, she said, now we're in our permanent ship. Uh, what she's saying is, is that, like I said before in the previous video, when you're going through P days or processing days, you're going to be in the Pearl Harbor. Uh, and then once you've done that, you are go across the other side of the base to the MTS side, and you are in a ship or barracks, whatever you want to call them, but you're in that compartment until you graduate or until you get asthma. Uh, but you're, that's your permanent ship, quote unquote. That's the one you're going to be on. So love it take care of it get used to it and you know just make sure it's always on point do your part because there are so many more pairs of eyes looking at us For real. Um, it's stressful at the moment i'm trying to get um... so right here in this pet officer's hands is as the recruit training guides book so it's this recruits training guide uh, as a recruit you're going to get it it's going to have all the information you need for all the classes you go to it's going to give you the information on the basic like 11 general orders your rank and recognition chain of command and if you go to a class about you know naval ships and airplanes it's going to have the powerpoints in there and like the things for you to study because you're going to take uh academic tests while you're in boot camp as well which are also uh if you fail that you will get sent back kind of a thing so make sure you're paying attention to class this is all the stuff you need to know as a basically trained sailor regardless of what your rate is going to be so uh, and also, don't write silly things in there because it's going to be inspected at all times. Used to it, I guess. I believe with Division 229, when we first switched from P days where we were coaching most of the time to week one where we were holding them accountable, it scared a few of them that they weren't going to be able to meet the standard that we expect them to hold. Everybody on your faces, now! You can't hack in the water. You ready to quit? You want to quit? I can get you out of here. All recruits when you first pick them up from basically civilians and then get them into the week one. So as you can see here, uh, this is called ITE or intensive training exercise or as recruits like to call it, getting beat. Uh, but that's not the proper term, it's ITE. Uh, so this is to correct a deficiency and to motivate um, recruits to you know, work as a team to improve. Uh, it's multiple things in reality. Uh, as an RDC, you use this as a motivational tool. Uh, you use those, this if they you're not moving fast enough you want to give them a little motivation to move faster make them do some push-ups but here's the great thing about this is i would like to utilize this um whenever i noticed that if a recruit was not getting right and i need to lose a little ite and i would know hey this recruit started with their push-ups i would start with push-ups this recruit can't do planks or or, or sit-ups i would start with sit-ups leg lifts whatever the core workout is on the card um, or they're not good at their PT of like running. So then I would do 10 counts or eight counts any, or jumping jacks, whatever the card allowed me to do at the time. And what I mean by that is the instruction changes. Um, I don't remember the time frame, maybe six months, maybe a year. Whenever the cha instruction changes, you read it, sign the page 13, and you're given a new card. So the color of the card doesn't mean anything except for the fact that um, it's whatever instruction we're on now. So if we're, the cards are orange and then we get a new instruction, now the cards are yellow. And so that means you're going to walk around with a yellow card with new workouts and the updated page 13 on it. Um, so if someone sees you walk around with an orange card and we have the new instruction, it's a yellow card, then they know that you're not utilizing the updated instruction. And you have to have this card in hand visible while you're doing the workouts. Uh, there's a lot of rules to it, you know, like no P ITE within like an hour of chow. Uh, so they don't – you can't just – have the meat, then make them throw up, right? That's not proper. It's not, you're not supposed to do this to cause them harm or pain. You're supposed to do this as a motivational tool. Uh, but as a recruit, uh, just keep in mind that you will get ITE'd uh, either as an individual uh, or you'll get ITE'd as a group, one team, one fight. You may be the perfect recruit, but if your division isn't working together as a team, then they need to learn to do push ups as a team. And they're, at least we can start there as one team, one fight training and you start using intensive training exercises on them, they really struggle. It's mostly a mindset. When someone's in your face yelling at you, they'll have a hard time doing 10, 15 push-ups and they kind of start to quit on themselves before they need to. You're quitting. You're not sweating. You're not putting any effort into it. You're just quitting. So as you can see here, while they're being ITE, you're a um, couple things, right? It doesn't mean the whole group's going to get ITE. You just have maybe a group here that weren't uh, 
this need motivation. And then you got your uh, artist here over here that's working with the group. I don't know what they're doing. It looks like they're teaching them. It looks like they maybe they just started wearing this uniform and he's teaching them how to put on blousing straps maybe. Um, and then you got a recruit up here to sit in his rack. He's probably SIQ. Uh, he's got a little blue sheet here, which means he probably just went to dental and got some wisdom teeth removed. So SIQ for a few days in LD, and then they're good to go. Yeah, dental availability probably because, look, there's another recruit just completely passed out. Um, and then there's a recruit on watch here making a deck log entry. So uh, just because you're ITing doesn't mean you need to stop training. Me personally, I was the trainer. I liked being on the floor. I loved motivating and training recruits. I loved PTing with them. I just loved seeing them improve, and I loved seeing them get good scores. And I would share those scores with them. So RCs don't do that. I just love sharing. When the recruits did well, they once uh, got a 4.98, which is almost perfect on an inspection. I just took them to go get a phone call. Not every RC is like that. Not every RC doesn't mean they're bad for not doing it. It's just how I did I got I did my best to try to motivate them to get buy into the program. I mean, they came here for a reason. Uh, it's easier to, you know, motivate someone to want to do something than it is to make them do it. So uh, it's, you know, how it goes is up to you. Uh, just make sure that you're doing it the correct way as an RDC. And as a recruit, make sure you're giving 100% effort all the time because you asked to be here. Uh, so some things to just keep in mind. Yes, get over here. What? So this is there are strict regulations on how everything belonging to a recruit is folded, stored, stored, stowed, and worn. Uh, so yes, there's also going to be inspections on this called DMI, a dynamic material inspection, and it'll get either one or two things. Either one, you'll get tested to on how you. Um, follow instructions on making your rack, or you'll get uh, tested on following instructions on folding and storing your clothes within your rack. And you have to fold them a certain way, and you have to place them a certain way. So not only is it just constantly under inspection of that, but there is a graded inspection on that as well. So as an RC, always walk your house, uh, your house being your compartment. Always um, walk your compartment, but we call it house, and just check it. Check it in the morning, check it in the middle of the day, check it before you go out to an event. Uh, as a recruit, make sure your stuff is right, you're paying attention, help out your rack mates. Uh, that's the easy way to get compartment hits, and those are the ones that hurt the most on your score. Uh, and uh, as a recruit, you might think, oh, I don't care about the score. Well, there's flags you earn. You get to march around with, which we'll go around here in the next video, but you get to earn those things and display them properly. It's a pride thing. It's showing, like, hey, like we're, we're killing it, you know? We're doing really well. We get to march around with all these flags. And then on top of that, um, if you're constantly messing up, then you're going to get a lot of attention from your RDCs. So just keep that in mind. What side of the open side of your pillow go to? The open side of the right So why is your pillow backwards? Uh, Fix it! <laughs> it's the same hit every day. You both had that hit yesterday. Only one of you fixed it. Why didn't you look at it? I didn't see it, Petty Officer. Once he makes his rack, look at it for him. So what he's doing right now is getting, he's obviously just going over what I talked about now. There's very specific ways, even your pillow faces and how it sits on the rack and how it's, me there's like measurements for all this, right? And you're taught this. You're taught this for success. And then what, once you're taught it, you're now held to that standard. So obviously it might be a little rough at first, but you do it every day and you maintain it all day. Uh, and then he's, you know, he's doing the right thing. He's saying, hey, your rack mate, the guy who probably sleeps right below him on this, on this rack, is saying, hey, why don't you look at his rack? You're right next to him. Help out your shipmate. Don't let him burn on his own. So as a recruit, make sure you're looking out for each other. It's I called teamwork. Help. Figure it out. I have That's been the most challenging part is just getting along with everyone and trying to work together and putting all differences aside and understanding that we have one goal to accomplish. So some people have adjusted to that better than others. Very good statement. You're going to be uh, working as one team towards one goal. You're all trying to graduate, but you don't graduate as an individual, you graduate as a team. When you go to graduation, you don't. they don't call individual names except for the, the, the star recruits, the star sailors that graduated, right? Uh, the top honor, guard, uh, honor rewards. Um, and but when you're going through boot camp, it's a lot of this is team graded. You can fail as an individual, which you don't want to, of course, but you can fail as a team. Every score your division gets, you get as a division, a whole group. And you're also going to be working with people that are from all around the world of different genders, age, and different sexual orientation, different skin color, different religion, different height, whatever you want to say, different hair color, anything. They're all different. They're all from around the world. 
you can't have any biases. You can't have anything that doesn't fly in the Navy, and it definitely won't fly in boot camp. Uh, you're, and throughout the Navy, you're going to be running into people of all different walks of life. You got to learn to work together. Uh, you got to learn to respect each other. It's mutual respect. You don't have to like the person next to you. You just got to understand and respect them. That's it. And so that you know that you're both just trying to get through boot camp. You're both just trying to get through a work day. You're both just trying to get home from deployment. You're both just trying to fight a fire. It's really that simple. Six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, so this is bad. Uh, four recruits in division are caught arguing with their department after hours and reported to their RDC. Yeah, you're going to get outed. Uh, that might sound like the snitch, but the thing is, if you guys are being up in the middle of the night, you know, you run pretty hard as a recruit. Uh, you're, pro one, probably jet lag still. Two, you're kept up on your feet for most of the day, which some people aren't used to. Three, you're PTing every day, which some people aren't used to, and you're marching, you're learning a lot of new things. So you're just, you know, emotionally, physically, and mentally tired, especially in the beginning. The last thing you want is people arguing in the middle of the night and keeping you up. You're gonna, yeah, you're gonna be like, yeah, hey, petty officer or chief, that these guys were arguing and they kept me up at night and it sucked. Uh, it was horrible. They're just arguing with each other and we all hate it. You're good. Don't do that. I don't there's no reason to have beef in boot camp. It's it's silly. So that IT session was to show them after taps they're not allowed to argue with each other and they have to just handle things internally as a as a division. What number? Then yell it! 12! 12! Do it! Do it! That's not yelling! So uh, obviously, he's getting really up into this recruit's face, right? And she's, I don't know, maybe she's just going through it just because it's a lot being yelled at or maybe because of she's mad that she got called out, if this is the recruit, right, that got called out. Uh, but regardless, she's obviously having a little bit of a, I don't want to say a bad attitude, but she's she's feeling herself a little bit with her emotions. And when that's normal, you're going to feel that as a recruit. Uh, you're, it, this is probably a new experience. Not everyone grew up getting yelled at in life. Hopefully you didn't, right? Uh, so it's definitely weird when someone gets in your face and yells at you, and you got to understand they're not going to yell at you for the way you look or, or anything like that uh, or the way you talk, unless you're, you know, obviously you're supposed to sound off and you don't sound off properly, but that's different. Um, they're going to call you out on your character and your actions, what you do. What you do matters. What you say matters. So at this point, they're getting at him but supposedly this is the recruit that uh was the argument at night so now you you know motivation not to do that anymore and she's probably very upset that she got called out she's probably very upset that she's getting yelled at in the face she's not lashing back <clears throat> she's throwing great restraint but at the same time she is a little bit emotional so he's calling that out he's saying you gotta get rid of that emotion it's not about that it's about one team one fight getting through boot camp the whole point of going to boot camp is to get out of boot camp you need to graduate these little things like this though where you get because you're going to get told to do things in the fleet, it's, and there's no open for argument. Sure, maybe you want to have a discussion about how you want to do things differently or, for, or better, but you know, if someone of a, who's in charge of you tells you to do things, you can't have an attitude about it. That doesn't fly. So she's rather just have an attitude, and he's just calling it out, and it's okay. It, work through it. Do your best. Don't lash back. Definitely don't lash back. But they'll work with you. They might consider. They might even think about. I would like to challenge those that had a little bit of attitude with me and give them positions uh, within a division uh, of responsibility. And then they kind of take that in ownership and they grow. Not everyone's the same. It didn't work all the time, but just understand. Hey, as an RC, you're going to have this problem. It's always been a problem throughout the generations. Every single generation. It's not just this generation. It's our generation too. Whatever you want to say. And as a recruit, don't feel yourself like that. Let it go. It's not personal. It's never personal. They're doing exactly what they need to make sure that you learn to take orders and do the right thing without having a feeling about it. There's, there's, there's no need to have feelings about it. Yell 12. 12, Daniel. 12, Daniel, I'm saying. No one feels sorry for you, Calvin. No one. You want to be a part of this? You want to act like them? You're going to pay for it just like they do. But they can't bring every situation to the RDCs, and also they can't argue with each other like they're still in high school. They need to realize that they're grown women and across the hall are men, and they need to handle it amongst one another. I don't want to hear one recruit knocking on my door telling me, see me recruit so-and-so did this. Handle it amongst yourselves like grown women. You understand? Uh, so what he's saying, right? Like, 
he doesn't want to hear about it because you're going to have discourse. This is natural, right? Like I said, because of that, of everyone coming from a different place, you're going to have it. And there's going to be those things where you're going to have like um, a, a, a meeting of the council, right, of recruits and like, hey, we just need to figure this out and just squash this and move on and just graduate. Uh, you're going to have that. It happens all the time. And as an RDC, it's good when they do that. They're coming together. They're learning to deal with their problems and work as a team of people that they've never met before in their life. This is great. Um, encourage it. Encourage the idea that they can self-regulate, which is exactly what you do. You don't want to be on recruits all the time. It's exhausting. If they can learn to handle their own problems and then move on to where they graduate, that's great. And I, I would encourage it. Just be also be careful that they're not – trying to collaborate to do something that's um, against the rules. When you come to boot camp, it's not just about me as an individual, it's about us as a team. They're not sure who's gonna step up and take leadership positions, who's gonna help support those leaders. So it's just a forming stage at the very beginning of boot camp where they learn how to come together and work together. So 1400, head on spot, same time entry, forward hold on spot. Understand? I'm kind of learning leadership. There's a channel for men in our in our division. I am a head. Uh, I'm a head PO. Just I clean the head. I clean the bathrooms. I actually enjoy doing it. I actually like to keep it clean. And what I don't enjoy is people not listening to <laughs> to what I tell. So, so two things there. One, I'm just gonna go ahead and knock this out. Yeah. Uh, Kind of stinks when people don't do what they're told, huh? Yeah, I guess how it feels as an RDC when you have sometimes recruits that act out and don't do what they're told. It's like, wow, you came here, you were on your own, right? Venting a little bit. But, yeah, it definitely stinks. Um, but you might think it's silly that he's the head PO, but no joke, that is an extremely important job. Um, underappreciated. Uh, I usually give them the uh, praise they deserve. One, they're cleaning up the head. There's like a group of them. Usually it's like four or five of them that are with the with one head PO and you got your head crew. They People love inspecting the head because no one likes cleaning the head. Uh, so it's important that, you know, they're going in and they're cleaning up after you uh, as a fellow recruit, right? And they're it's their job to make sure it's, it's ready for inspection and clean at all times. Showers, sinks, urinals, toilets, doesn't matter. Floors, mirrors, they're, they're making sure it's always on spot. The only time it's off spot is is when you're taking showers uh, or we're doing cleaning stations for it. Uh, so other than that, it has to always, you use the head, they're going to probably walk in after you and make sure that you wipe down the seat properly. The toilet paper is facing at 12 o'clock. The sink is clear. You didn't splash onto the mirror. You didn't drip anything on the floor. Uh, there's no you know, trash on the floor from you drying your hands. Uh, so he's going out and he's setting rules. Hey, the, he's usually setting rules to like, hey, if we – just use you know these stalls instead. It's easier to keep clean uh, whenever it's like off hours kind of a thing. So we don't have to clean every single stall all the time. They're going to come with these rules. Re they're recruit rules. There's not real uh, RTC rules or anything like that. Uh, so as an RTC, no, you can't really enforce that. Uh, you can't tell a recruit not to use certain heads. But if they come up with their own thing where they want to clean, you know, utilize one head and weigh the line instead of using multiple of the urinals, um, okay, cool. Let them do it. Uh, but... You can't punish them for going outside the rules. That's another in-house thing they have to figure out. So head PO, much respect. It's a very underappreciated job. And there's other jobs too, like RPOC, AROC, stuff like that. And that's why being a team comes into part. Make sure you only hit A, please. Get in the shower. So we're going to go ahead and stop the video here and before we go on to the initial swim qualification. Um, I'm going to go ahead and continue this series uh, just to go in more depth. And I found a couple more videos that go in depth on individual things. And if you like, go over to the uh, Recruit Chain of Command, like RPOC, AROC, if you like to see those things. And then this next video, I'm going to go pretty hard in depth about this swim qualification, about what happens if you don't swim and uh, or don't pass a swim and uh, what the swim involves and what to expect and uh, just, you know, ways for you to, if you decide to join the Navy and go to boot camp, how you can succeed. I hope you appreciated the video. Hoo-yah, Navy.